Hello everyone, welcome back to Teasing Jersey. My name is Alex. Welcome back to the Matcha series. This is part two. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the um, more traditional way to brew matcha. By more traditional, I mean I'm going to be using the chasen instead of the um, like electric whisk. For this, I'm going to be using the ceremonial grade matcha from Teas New Jersey. And I will give you a look at that. This is the ceremonial grade matcha. And this tea is from Aichi Prefecture in Japan. It is an imperial level ceremonial grade matcha. The flavors of this tea are very bright. They're very high. You get a lot of those high notes. And this tea is not bitter at all. It is super smooth, creamy, and super delicious. So I'm going to show you how to make that with the chase in here. I have my shasaku um, scoop and the shawan. The shawan is the tea bowl. I can show you here. I had a little bit of matcha a little bit earlier. There are many different kinds of shawans. There are um, artists who dedicate like their whole lives to um, the art of making the shawan. This is not a very traditional shawan, just like a matcha bowl. Um, but there are beautiful examples of shawans, and throughout history there have been so many. The chasen is the tea whisk, so basically this gets a nice froth um, on the matcha. And then the little chasen holder. The steps for making uh, matcha. I'm going to be getting two scoops of the shasaku, so this is about one scoop, and then I'm going to do two of those. First I'm going to warm up the tea bowl, I'm going to um, like cleanse it, then I'm going to add the powder, I'm going to add a little bit of water, and the water we're using 170 degree water, you don't want to use too hot, um, because it'll burn the matcha and it'll... Uh, bring out like the catechins and the tea and make the tea more bitter. So you want to use like 170. You could even go a little bit lower. Or you can go higher if you like to um, have like a stronger astringency in your tea. Then I'm going to whisk and yeah so a little bit of water. I'm going to whisk that into like a paste and then I'm going to add some more water and get a nice foam on top and you guys will see that. So I'll bring the camera around and show you. So that's how you make matcha with a chasen, or the tea whisk. The recommended amount for matcha, like per serving, is like half a teaspoon. Two of these gets you half a teaspoon. Um, if I want a really, really strong matcha or a really smooth and rich matcha, I'll use um, one teaspoon. So I'll do four of these. I have used a lot more. If you're using a bowl similar to this, um, you don't want to put too much because you want to be able to whisk it. So the way to drink matcha, if you make it in a bowl like this and you want to be a little bit like on the more traditional side, it's supposed to be two and a half sips, so kind of like three sips. So if you make like this amount, you'll take one sip, two sip, and then what's left should be like a half sip. And you want to get some of that froth in there because that'll make it more smooth in your mouth. Yeah, so this matcha is so smooth, so creamy, 
and it's clean. It has like a brightness to it. It's not like grassy at all. You kind of have it a little bit in the aftertaste, but that grassiness turns to like a sweetness and it kind of lingers around your mouth and starts to get your mouth salivating and that turns to sweetness and that stays with you for a while. Mm. This is a really nice tea. Make sure you check it out. And for part three, I'm going to be doing the non-traditional way or the less traditional, less, yeah, the less traditional way to make matcha so you can do it at home without these tools. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share around. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in part three and four of the matcha series.